Hello, my name is Jason Rowe, and this is a brief video on getting started with Git, sort of an introduction using the Visual Studio 2012 plugin that just was announced recently. And uh, I just want to mention that when I use Git uh, in my normal workflow, I use the command line for most everything and then uh, Tortoise Git for the file history. But for a demo, I, I think that the visual tools um, are easier to demo and they're doing a good job. So I just wanted to show people what's available now and kind of make some comments. So introduction to Git, going to go through some basics of why people use Git, um, how to get started, and then go through a demo of initializing a repo and branching and merging using the Visual Studio 2012 plugin. So why use Git? Um, it's open source distributed version control system designed for speed and efficiency. So it's um, in a nutshell that wraps it all up but um, some of the other major reasons are it's getting easier to learn. Um, there is a lots of tooling available in websites uh, with documentations and books that I'll kind of show you. It is becoming, I mean, it's easy to branch and merge. It's lightweight. Um, and by its very nature, it's distributed. So that opens you up for um, all types of different workflows. And I'll go into those in a little bit more detail. So let's talk about what I mentioned, easy to learn. Uh, the get that dash scm.com has really wrapped up everything you need to know in a nice site. Um, it's got the reference to the Pro Git book, which I highly re recommend. Downloads and the installers are easier than ever for Windows. Um, I wouldn't have said that in the past, but now it's uh, very solid, easy to use. The only thing you really need to know uh, when installing is uh, your preferences to choose. Um, I use the Open SSH. Uh, when it asks how you want to integrate with versus the putty and the other major um, selection you have is to how to do handle line endings and I always choose the line endings that say commit as is and check out as is so just to prevent any issues and you'll see those as you install um, another uh, thing I wanted to mention is the trygithub.com which you can just Quickly use the emulator to learn about um, different uh, ways to use the commit git console console. So it's a nice easy emulator to get started without installing any tools. And then the visual clients plugins. Um, Tortoise Git, as I mentioned, is the Windows Explorer tool, and I usually uh, use it for showing the log gives you nice rep representations of branches and merges and a lot of details and it um, gives you a quick way to do diffs Visual Studio 2012 plugin um, which was just announced I'll go through that in my demo um, but they have lots of information on how to use it too and get extensions, which I haven't used yet. It sort of sounds like the current de facto for Visual Studio graphical user interface for Git. Uh, works with 20, 2005, 2008, 2010. So, get into a little bit more about uh, Git features, the offline and fast. Um, that's one of the things, after using it for a while, you realize how quick it is, and mostly because it's disconnected from a central server when you do a file view history you're not going back to over the network um, actually you can do branching merging committing all without talking to a central server um, like I mentioned git is distributed each person when they start working on the project has their own full repository so it's kind of naturally they have their own branch and this opens you up for all types of workflows where if you wanted to have um, only specific users having rights to commit to a branch or um, maybe they push to a repository in their region and then that 
one gets pushed to a more central server. In reality, most people, small companies, they just use it as a centralized workflow and get all the benefits of a distributed source control system. Um, gets very easy to do branching and merging. I keep using the word lightweight because it is so quick to just switch between branches and create new branches and it utilizes the same folder structure so Visual Studio can just automatically update um, the code as you switch the branch. So let's go through a quick demo of setting up a repository, doing initial commits, making changes, and then uh, we'll do a branch and then we'll merge. So we'll just do file new project and we'll make sure add to source control is selected and we'll choose git. So our initial git repo is set up. You can see that right here. So it's no changes. And we've got all these pending files to add. And Visual Studio represents those as plus marks. So we'll right click and we'll do a commit. And we'll move drag and drop everything into included in this change. Make sure everything is saved. And do our initial commit. So we've got our initial commit. And we are on the master for branches. And we'll look at our master branch. View history. And we have our initial commit. So that's it to get started. Um, most of the time though, you won't be doing an initial project. Usually you'll be, you know, pulling in code from or cloning from another source. So there's this little plug here, connect to team projects, and you can do, go to clone. And you would just use, um, you know, a HTTP S or HTTP um, Git repository. Throw it in here and hit clone. And that will pull it down. So as long as you have um, your user has permission to access, you can push and pull from that GitHub repo. So let's go back to our example and make some changes. And you can see it turns it into a red check mark. I think we have pending, pending edits and we can commit those. So now that we've got everything set up in initial commit, let's uh, do a branching and merging scenario. So we'll say we're working on bug fix and we're on, remember we're on the master branch right now, but let's say we start a bug fix and realize it's gonna take more than a few minutes so we want to be in a branch. Go over to our branches, new branch, and we'll name it bug fix branch. And we'll select checkout, which means we're going to switch to that branch immediately after creating it. Checkout in SVN has a, has a totally different meaning, so I just wanted to mention that in SVN when you do a checkout, you're actually pulling it from a central server. In this case, Git, we're actually just checking out or switching to the other branch. So we create it, we switch to it, now it's now bolded, means we're on it. So we have these pending changes, so we better commit them before we lose them. So initial work on bug fix. So let's take a look at what just happened here. Go to branches. We have two branches, we can view history. You can see our bug fix is now above master in commits. And you can view commit details, you can view history, uh, compare with previous, I mean. There's a lot of good tooling support here. So now let's just say we um, finish and want to merge this back in. Let's uh, 
commit or finish changes. Go into branches. Switch to master. Go to merge and merge in our bug fix. That's it. We are now on the master. We have our bug fix added and we have no pending changes. And we can do a cleanup and delete this branch. So this branch was actually only a local branch. We never pushed it to a remote repository. So no one else would ever know we created this branch. It's just basically a personal workflow that allowed us to com complete this change. So a few gotchas and questions. Uh, if you have questions, I mean, you can contact me at jason.row at gmail.com or leave a comment. So gotchas, um, as I said, the Visual Studio 2012 plugin only supports HTTP, HTTPS at this time. They're working on SSH support. It's a consumer technical preview, meaning it's not a, a live production thing at this point. To me, in my comments, I would say they need some work on merging, conflict resolution. Um, in most cases, Git will just automatically merge things, but they do have some work around that, and I would stick with the Tortoise Git or the other visual plugins for now. But they're making a lot of progress, and it looks pretty good, so I wanted to show those off. Another gotcha is Git has no revision numbers since it's snapshot-based. It uses the hashes, so a lot of teams will start using uh, build numbers instead of revision numbers. So thanks for your time, and I hope you uh, got some good information.